The ancestors of the present-day Maori created an outpost of Polynesian culture on the North and South Islands of New Zealand. They remained relatively isolated from external contact until 1769. In that year, English navigator and explorer Captain James Cook initiated a permanent European presence in New Zealand. As a result, Maori culture would be dramatically changed in less than a century. In 1840, some 500 Maori chiefs signed a treaty with the British government. The treaty promised the Maoris that they would keep their lands and property and have equal treatment under the law as British subjects. However, the British later seized Maori lands and made the people move to reservations. As a result of war and disease, the Maori population fell drastically by 1896. Since World War II, the government's policies have been more favorable to the Maoris. In recent years, the government of New Zealand has acknowledged its responsibilities to the Maoris after a series of protests and court rulings. In 1996, the government agreed to a settlement with the Maoris that included land and cash worth $117 million, with the Maoris regaining some traditional fishing rights. The Maori have been striving to revive aspects of their traditional culture, reclaim artifacts of their cultural history from foreign museums, and regain their ancestral homes. As of 1997, the Maori of New Zealand numbered close to 525,000 people, or about 15% of New Zealand's total population. Archaeologists refer to two branches of Maori, the archaic and the traditional. The archaic Maori were the original inhabitants of New Zealand. Their culture dates back to around 1000 AD. The traditional Maori are believed to have migrated to the North Island around the 14th century. The original homeland of the traditional Maori was in the society islands of Polynesia. Maori migrants left there to escape warfare and the demands of excessive taxes. Tattooing is an integral part of the Maori culture. The process of a person receiving a tattoo involves a series of rituals. The traditional Maori tattoo practice is known as tomoko. Since the head is believed to be the most sacred part of the body by the Maori, tomoko was most often done on the face. These traditional facial tattoos involve the use of curved shapes and spiraling patterns. Either the pattern itself was tattooed or the design blacks out the background to create a negative space pattern. Apart from tattooing the face, men also often wore tattoos on their thighs and arms. Women usually had tattoos on their chin and lips. Rather than using needles, the Maori used chisels and knives usually made out of shark teeth, sharpened albatross bones, stones, or even iron. The chisels would be struck with a mallet to puncture the skin, and knives would be used to create longer cuts. Tattooists used both smooth and serrated chisels and blades depending on the pattern and the effect they were aiming to achieve. The high significance of tattoos in the Maori culture is probably best proven through the fact that there is a whole legend dedicated to how Tomoko came about. According to Maori mythology, there was once a young man who fell in love with the princess of the underworld. The couple got married and his wife departed the underworld to be with him on earth. He mistreated his new wife, and she returned to be with her father in the underworld. Fraught with grief and regret at the loss of his wife, he decided to follow her. He entered the underworld and, after many trials and challenges, reached his wife's father. Upon arrival, he found himself mocked. Different placements of the tattoos had different meanings. The placement in the center of the forehead referred to the person's overall rank within the social group. Under the eyebrows represented your position. Around the eyes and nose was your sub-tribe rank. Around the temples was your marital status, including the number of marriages the person had had. Under the nose on a man, this would be his signature, memorized by tribal chiefs who used it when signing deeds, orders, and buying property. On the cheeks was the person's profession. The chin refers to prestige or authority. The jaw area, the person's birth status, often including reference to maternal and paternal lineages. Different shapes also had different meanings. The shape of a spiral takes form from an unfurled fern leaf, and as it, such, it means growth, new beginnings, and harmony. Depending on the overall pattern used in the design, each spiral can also represent a family member or loved one. The fish hook. This symbol takes on the appearance of a semi-abstract style fish hook, looking a bit like an incomplete number eight. Fish was one of the main sources of sustenance for the indigenous Maori people and remains one of the key ingredients in many traditional dishes. 
As such, it's unsurprising that means prosperity and good health. A single twist. Taking the shape of the number 8, this symbol means the path of life. It also stands for eternity. The double and triple twist. This symbol represents relationships. The twists are symbolic of unity between two people, groups, or cultures. Because the twists are part of a symbol already associated with affinity, this joining is believed to last for eternity. Eternal love and friendship are the key meanings behind this element. The haka is a type of ancient Maori dance traditionally used on the battlefield, as well as when groups came together in peace. Haka is a fierce display of a tribe's pride, strength, and unity. Actions include violent foot stamping, tongue protrusions, and a rhythmic body slapping to accompany a loud chant. The words of a haka often poetically describe ancestors and events in the tribe's history. Haka is still used today in Maori ceremonies and celebrations to honor guests and show the importance of the occasion. Traditional structures and many objects that featured in daily Maori life are covered in elaborately carved decoration, from the prow of a canoe and post of a meeting house to weapons. While each object serves as a functional work of art, it also tells a story. Maori woodcarvers used tools made from greenstone, which was precious for its strength as well as its natural beauty. The art of wood carving focuses on using a range of native timbers, requiring patience, diligence, and an intuition for the organic material. Wood carving is more than a historical curiosity in New Zealand. It is a skill that many continue to hold in both honor of their heritage and to carry the lessons it teaches. Carvings forward. based on Maori designs, in particular, have special significance. The pre-European Maori had no written language, so tribal history and the stories of the gods were kept using many forms of fine arts and crafts, ranging from basket and cloth weaving to complex wood, bone, shell, and jade carving. These artifacts were then handed down through generations of tribal elders and became sacred objects or treasures, telling the history of a tribe and taking on the spirits of past great leaders and warriors who had worn them. It is believed that a carving which is worn with respect or given and received with love takes on part of the spirit of those who wore or handled it. In this way, it becomes a spiritual link between people spanning time and distance. A carving that has been worn by family or tribal members over many generations contains the spirit of all those people and is truly a great and powerful treasure. Pendants, jewelry, and various tools such as needles, spear tips, and fish hooks made from bone developed into a fine art form with great importance being placed on every piece, many of which took years to make using stone tools. Some have inlays of precious stones or colorful shell, and all have a story or meaning behind their design. The Maori have a great respect for nature and have many legends about the creation of the earth and all its inhabitants. Many of these legends revolve around the spirits or gods who created or protect each part of their world, such as the mountains, the forests, the lakes, and the creatures of the sea. Most carvings combine elements from several areas of mythology which interact with each other to tell a story. Each element has its own specific meaning and the way they are portrayed or combined is what gives a carving its own special character. The meanings of some elements vary from region to region, but all share common root. A traditional day for the Maori began early, with prayers and singing to worship the rising sun. The daily life of the community was based around getting food, so most people spent their days in activities such as planting and tending crops in communal gardens, fishing or gathering seafood, hunting moa, other birds or seals. The children and adults worked alongside each other, and the chiefs worked together with their people. After European explorers and traders began visiting New Zealand, traditional life in Maori villages changed. Europeans started trading new foods such as potatoes and pigs new technology such as iron, tools, and guns. This meant less time was needed to grow or gather for the community. Some Maori became involved in trading food, flax, or timber with Europeans, which sometimes took them away from their villages. When missionaries arrived from 1814, many children attended mission schools and learned European concepts of time. Most chiefs were expected to work alongside their people, and they often proved the most expert and energetic. A few specialized in occupations such as carving, tattooing, or making feather cloaks. Children also worked alongside their families, learning adult tasks by imitation. Even very old people helped with light tasks such as plating and mending fish nets or shaping greenstone tools and ornaments.